another package. Now this one, it doesn't weigh anything, and it's got my curiosity peak, so I decided to bring it up here and open it. Oh, it's got a note. Hope the motorcycle cover helped from Barbara. Oh, good. Barbara, thank you. Talk about perfect timing. So I got another one, same brand. Um, mine took a real hurting being out there in that 100 degree weather. The 100 degrees plus some of the wind. Tomorrow we're hitting the road and we're driving east from here to Connecticut to a place I've never been. And this is going to come with us. We're going to the New England Motorcycle Museum. This guy, Ken, bought this old mill. Huge, you know multiple buildings on a big piece of property and spent the last handful of years restoring these buildings and turning them into a motorcycle museum and I've watched his YouTube channel with a combination of envy and pride at what he's done to restore those buildings and bring them back yeah, and, and mix in there they they have these old dirt bikes. Uh, they part of their their business is basically they they buy up old um, sometimes really beat up sometimes mint condition old uh, dirt bikes and motorcycles of all kinds. But mainly a lot of focus on old two stroke dirt bikes. And you know me, I've got a hankering for old two strokes. You know, ever since I somehow talked my dad into buying me a. 1978 YZ125 when I was 14 years old, something like that. They recently started, uh, they became a dealer for a brand of motorcycles called Gas Gas. Uh, it's, origin it's a Spanish brand, been around for a while, and got bought up by the Orange Company, KTM. If you all have been around, you know I had a KTM, a 2018. Uh, EXC F500. Then I went from that to the the Kawasaki KLX 250. I went from that to the the last one I had, the GPX Moto 250 two stroke. And so when they started selling these gas gas bikes, and I'd had my eye on gas gas for quite a while, and they became a dealer. It was kind of a match made in heaven. I'd already been been just really wanting to get out there and visit this uh, museum that they've put together and now they're selling a, a, a bike that I've had my eye on for a long time and they have some new models that just you get a lot of bike for the amount of money so Barbara thank you this is right on time we're leaving tomorrow morning early early to drive over there it's about a, it's gonna be about a six hour drive they've got some amazing bikes on display amazing you know one-of-a-kind things that I'll never see again in my life I know there's a bunch of you out there watching this that are going to be interested in what they're doing over there at that museum Barbara thank you so much for sending this is it so we are on I-90 New York State Thruway and we're headed east which is not a direction that we normally drive we uh, put some fuel in 
Speed limit is 65. This is the first drive after I put the, the new fan on. So, so far so good. I can't think of a single thing that could go wrong, right? It's all, it's all good. It's just nuts and bolts. wake you up and get you going early this morning? Huh? stopped at a New York State Thruway rest stop. I just went inside and got myself a Popeye's chicken sandwich because I'm hungry. I'm gonna get Lefty maybe a piece of his chicken jerky. It is cold. We just went walking up the hill there and the wind is freezing. It is so chilly out. I don't know what's going on. Two days ago, we were like 75 degrees. And then this morning I wake up and it's 38 degrees outside. So, truck's doing great. We're well, way over halfway there. The truck is humming right along on cruise control, 65. We're going through some long sweeping up and down hills right now. Truck is doing really good. I've put put it out of my mind, you know, the fan repair, I'm going to call it a success because we're not having any issues at all. I'm so happy about that. And we're we're well on track to get there. Let's keep rolling. We're going to chow this sandwich down, give him a little treat, and then we're going to get back on the road and get there as early as we can today so that we can see this new surprise I've got. <laughs> this bright red surprise. <laughs>
do you know that we're almost there and you've never been here before? Why are you getting all excited? We've got 12 miles to go. So we're just... I don't know how he knows. I didn't say a word. You gotta calm down, buddy. Let me finish this drive. A quarter mile, turn right onto Steel Road. Okay, calm down. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, it's pretty country out here, that's for sure. Real pretty. The next ride onto Steel Road. Okay. It was a heck of a drive. Very windy all day. Take the next left, then your destination will be on the left. No, I think what we're going to do is pull up right over here. And back her in. Ha ha! How's that? You okay? There we go. So we made it. Hot rod. So right there, Lefty's glad to be out of the truck.
So I'll tell you what, I want to get a shot of these uh, roosters right here. <laughs> That's where they test out the big bikes. Hey, you be a good boy? Huh? You be a good boy? Okay. Okay. That's my puppy. I gotta go over to the store, okay? Can you wait at the truck and be a good boy? Can you wait at the truck? destination today okay so that was about a six hour drive in total I think I wish it wasn't so windy drive wasn't bad we did interstate 90 to interstate 91 got off of 91 like 15 miles ago and then just wound our way around through the town until we just got here. So, hey, I'm gonna go across the street and let them know I'm here so we can take care of our business. Leave Lefty in the truck just to guard everything. Look at. <laughs> He's, uh, he's a little wound up today. So I'm lucky enough he's gonna let me uh, take a walk up with him, see the museum real quick, see all the bikes. What a fun place to work. <laughs> what a fun place to work. Look at that. So I was really lucky that Ken Jr., uh, the son of Ken Sr., obviously, he took some time and walked me around through the uh, the showroom and then down through the museum here. Now you can see, I mentioned they do a lot of dirt bikes, but they got a lot of bikes of all kinds. They've got Rokon, two-wheel drive bikes, a lot of CR500s. They're big fans of the CR500, and just a lot of really unique and in beautiful condition a lot of these bikes some they own some are there that are owned by other folks that just have them there on display just really beautiful machines in here and then you get back into the the big bore two strokes which they're big fans of and and th those bikes didn't survive so they've got some of like the finest examples of the KX 420s, which were very rare, uh, RM 500s, very rare. Uh, they've got old KTM's, like 525s, YZ 490s, which were very rare and just didn't last. And they have them here in just beautiful condition. I was so impressed with the bikes that I saw. Not only the restored bikes, but also these uh, AF bikes, which is you take a CR500 engine and you put it on a newer model frame from like a 250, the aluminum frame version. So you get a 500 AF. They work a lot with built500.com to build those bikes. They've got a dyno down in their shop. So they're doing all kinds of building and testing a lot of the CR500 work they do to, to eke out uh, the most horsepower out of those machines that already come with a lot of horsepower. One of the things that really struck me as, as Ken was walking me around is the quality of the work. I mean, you saw the floors, and then here we go down a stairway, and just it's just done to such a high quality. I think it really shows the passion that they have in this whole project. You know, this is a four-story building, and as finances and scheduling allows, they complete each floor, and 
uh, we, as we come onto this floor here, as I swing the camera to the left, you can see how they've got this ready. This is going to be, from what he told me, their new gas gas sales center. Uh, they're just getting it finished up. They're going to put the offices down there and all the bikes and the gear and everything. So they just, they're really doing everything. I don't think you could do it any better to restore this building and keep so much of the original parts of it intact. And you all know how I romanticize old work and I imagine the, the work that used to take place in this building. It was a textile mill and it's so great to see them kind of honoring this building and trying to keep so much of it intact and, and just refurbishing it and bringing it back to make it look just beautiful. So back here, this is areas that most folks don't get to see. This is some of the unfinished buildings that they haven't yet done refurbishing on. Obviously a lot of money to get these things done to figure out what the best use is. He was talking about classic car museum, maybe apartments. Uh, so there's many many buildings. They've got all kinds of options on what to do with it and I really got to thank Ken Jr. for taking the time to walk me around, giving me a great deal on a new bike, but letting me see what they do here was really fantastic. And thanks a lot, Ken. I really appreciate that. So that was really nice of Ken to walk me around and show me. I don't think the video does it justice. That is a huge complex. They have, I don't know how many buildings in total. And you see they're like four and five stories tall and there's many of them. And the crew of guys that, you know, I've seen it in the videos, they all look like they're having a ball. Uh, you, can't, you can't beat that. I think you can see what's on the back of the truck right now. So what I've got is a 2023 EC300 gas gas uh, from the sale price of the last bike. And not a lot more money. I was able to pick up this brand new bike i am so excited thank you all for all the support the youtube viewership everything that you all do that allows me to swap bikes like this thank you all so much i can't thank you enough good morning what are you doing hiding in the trees Oh my lord, how am I going to get through all of there? Was that the perfect spot to pee? <laughs> oh, this is really pretty here. Uh, dude! You're so goofy. Oh, it was really nice of them to let me stay here overnight. Uh, you know, theoretically, we could have turned around and made the drive back home. Oops. Some garbage. I don't think that belongs there. It was feasible we could have turned around, but it was a, it was a long day, and technically it's five and a quarter hour drive if you don't do any stopping, but we do a lot of stopping. So it turns it into like a seven hour drive. And I didn't feel like doing seven more hours. I don't know if you could pick it up in the camera, but there's just stripes and stripes and stripes. Yeah, you can see them from them doing hole shots over here. You can definitely see them that direction. They start down there at the pavement line where the grass starts, but we're up in the morning we spent a really nice night I slept like a rock I woke up at midnight something woke me up don't know what but um, I got up and got some water and fell right back asleep and lefty slept really nice and actually at midnight when I woke up I turned the heater on because it got pretty chilly in there it's it's pretty nippy this morning
just saw a sign back a couple miles ago that we were at 1,724 feet elevation, which is Interstate 90's highest elevation all the way to Dakota. So the, the, the next, so the only higher elevation is all the way in the Dakotas. So we just crested 1,724 feet and now we've been coming down the other side. Truck's running great. We went up to that elevation at 65 miles an hour without stressing the truck. I'm wondering if I'm seeing a little bit of performance improvement because of the fan. I know, I know that when the fan is engaged, it does cut into your performance and if that my old fan was you know partially engaged all the time without me knowing uh, that it was cutting into our performance I, I wouldn't be surprised oh oh my gosh not much of a shoulder here wow Stop. We've got it's about three hours to go. Quick drive. It's funny, um, you know, it's a five, five and a half hour drive, which is just seems like nothing. You know, we we got up this morning and spent about maybe an hour in the truck waking up, started started the engine, let it warm up for 20, 30 minutes. Um, and then got in and started moving, found found a cup of coffee around the corner because I didn't I didn't bring everything. I didn't pack up to like make coffee and all that so and then to have a five hour drive ahead of us I feel like it's just five hours <laughs> wow those are some loud tires <laughs> it still works the camera took a bit of a fall from that shelf right there and it landed in Lefty's food bowl because when we took off this morning I forgot to take the camera from there and lay it on the bed which is what I normally do so when we're parked my two cameras sit right here on the shelf and when we're ready to travel they just get moved over and laid down softly on the bed or when the bed's folded up, you know, on the couch. And I forgot this morning. And we took off and shortly into the drive, I heard, kaboom! And I looked back and I could see the other camera laying here and I said, oh no. And it actually broke this camera's tripod mount. So it snapped off. So I'm gonna have to get I like this one because this is an extendable, so I'm going to have to replace that. But So I just picked the camera up just to see if it still works, and so far everything's working. It's recording, it's zooming in and out, and everything still seems to be working. You know what? The zoom actually seems to be smoother. <laughs> Maybe it smacked it back into shape. 
Okay, we made it back. Safe and sound in the garage. I am kind of wiped out. That was a lot of driving this morning. Thanks everyone for coming with us on this trip to the Kaplan Cycles New England Motorcycle Museum. I hope you enjoyed seeing that place. It really is amazing. Uh, if you're an East Coaster or if you love motorcycles, go over there and visit that place. You'll be blown away. Everybody take care. Be safe. We'll see you all again really soon.